This is a quick video explaining the new features of version 1.7 of the LIT from wastewater level for people already familiar with the product. For an overview of the fog rod and the LIT, visit our website wastewater-level.com. The LIT has a clean fog rod alarm which detects multiple fog rod contacts going wet together. This indicates a problem because the level in a lift station can't rise like that. The problem is usually caused by too much grease holding water inside and shorting out adjacent contacts, or by rags. This clean fog rod alarm is what we've improved in version 1.7. This is the LIT, and this is a simulator box which shows by these lights the 10 level relays and two fault relays of the uh, LIT. And these 10 switches simulate the level from the fog rod in a wet well. So right now, levels at 20% are shown by the level LEDs and by the relays. And the clean fog rod dip switch is on, which is where you want it to detect this problem. The grease problems are usually worse close to the lead start point because that's the usual high water mark. Let's assume that contact 5 is our lead start and that contacts 4 and 5 are effectively shorted together with water held inside this bad grease. So the level gets up to 30% and everything's fine. And a little while longer it gets up to contact 4, 40%, but because of this bad grease it shorts up to 50%. The clean fog rod alarm light starts flashing and so far the fault relay wired to this light has not come on. An internal 3 minute timer is running, I'll explain the reasons behind the timer shortly. Notice that relay 4 is turned on but not relay 5 so the lead pump hasn't started. And 40% levels come on but not 50%. The LIT knows that the level has reached 40% but because 50% went wet at the same time the level has definitely not yet reached that point. At the end of the timer period, it'll turn on that level relay. In earlier versions of the software, when this condition happened, the fog rod, the clean fog rod alarm LED went on, the relay went on, and relays 4 and 5 went on uh, immediately. I'm going to pause the video, and uh, when we come to the end of the timer, we'll start, we'll start again. Okay, so the timer's run out, and uh, the clean fog rod alarm light has gone on solidly, the fault relay has latched on, relay 5's come on, so now the lead pump will start, and the two LEDs that were affected, well the level, the level LEDs are flashing to show the uh, fog rod contacts that have been affected by this problem. So when you visit site, you see from the alarm light there's a problem that needs to be addressed. Of course, if you have telemetry wired into this fault relay, then uh, you'd know about it uh, you know, much sooner. You visit site, you see there's a problem, and you see which part of the fog rod's affected. How do we deal with it? Well, that's easy. We clean the fog rod by just pulling it up through the wiper, the squeegee, as part of the mounting bracket. Now here's a big difference from version 1.5. Let's reduce the level in the well. The fault relay and the full LED, they stay on, and the affected levels keep flashing. In the old version of software, those um, that the fault light and the fault relay, the flashing LEDs, they would go away. The fault condition would clear, basically. So it could be missed. But in this new version, the fault can't be missed. So how's the fault actually cleared? Well, either by cycling power, or by flicking the dip switch into the off position, and back into the on position. We want to move it back to on, otherwise we won't detect the fault condition in the future. An important note that everyone who does maintenance needs to know. When you clean the fog rod and put it back in the well, here's what happens. Basically, we cover all the contacts pretty much at the same time. So it's the same as the fault condition. All you've got to do Click the switch to the off position and back to the on position and you've dealt with it. So please let anyone doing maintenance know that they will need to clear the alarm after putting the rod back into the wet well. Now let's look at the reason behind the timer. 
let's empty the well and let's suppose the clean fog rod alarm has been ignored for some time and the grease buildup has got so bad that contacts 1 to 5 are basically all shorted together. In this example again we're assuming that contact 5 is the lead start point on the fog rod and so relay 5 is wired to the lead start point in the panel. Now this extreme scenario is not so common but it can happen. The level comes up to the bottom of the fog rod when it touches the first contact basically turns on all of them. Now in earlier versions of the software relays 1 through 5 would come on straight away and so we'd start the lead pump immediately. The result would be short cycling the pumps. In this version we can see that relay 1's come on but the other relays haven't. It's only at the end of the timer that that, uh, that will take place. So I'm going to pause the video and wait till the timer runs out. Okay, so the timer's run out and we see that relays 2, 3, 4 and 5 have come on but only after 3 minutes. So now the lead pump would start. As before, the fault relay only activates at the end of the time period and now all LEDs 1 to through 5, 10% to 50% are flashing to show the location of the problem. So with the new software we prevented short cycling of the pumps. Even this ex in this extreme case a pump can only start every 3 minutes. In a 2 pump station that's a maximum of 10 starts per hour per pump. So in summary the two main features of version 1.7. First, when the LIT detects a bad grease buildup or rags affecting level measurement it latches on the clean fog rod alarm and the alarm doesn't go away until power is cycled or the dip switch is moved. Second, when it detects the condition it starts a three minute timer. The LIT only activates a relay for the first wet contact until the timer's run out, when it activates the relays for the other wet contacts. The LIT also has an analog output that can be used for level or for telemetry. The value of the analog output reflects the level indicated by the highest activated relay. Now for people who have another minute or two to spare, I'll explain what happens in uh, some other cases that can happen. So let's clear the alarm. And let's say, as in the first case, we're at 30%, the level gets to 40%, and because of a rag, we short up to 50%. So same situation, the timer starts, the light starts flashing, but let's suppose in this case, the rag falls off before the timer runs out. Simple. The fault doesn't activate. So that fault condition needs to be present for that whole three minute time period, otherwise the fault condition does not um, activate. Second case I want to look at, let's suppose the inflow rate is actually very high. So we get to this 40% point and as before we're shorting up to the 50% because of say bad grease or rags and the alarm starts flashing but until the timer period we're not going to activate uh, relay number five. But in this case the inflow is so high that maybe after two minutes we actually reach contact six. Well, when we get to the level above those affected contacts, the LIT knows that that's the real level value, it knows there's a real problem, so it latches on the fault, turns on the fault relay, turns on all the relays up to the highest point, and so of course we've now started the lead pump. Last case I want to show, and clear the alarm again, is uh, just to make it clear that when we have um, Let's say we have some kind of rag condition, so we get to contact number one, and let's say contacts two to five are shorted together with a rag, it's just the same situation as um, with adjacent contacts. So here we go, we've, we've hit the 20% point, the clean fog rod light's flashing, I won't run right to the end um, of the timer period, but at that point we would be turning on uh, relays two through five. Okay, so that's basically all the new functionality that's been put into the LIT in version 1.7. Thank you very much for watching this video.